I'm Dan Johnson. Welcome yep. to Tom Apple, who is going to tell us about your own project. So okay. let's tackle that first, and then we'll sure. talk about the airplane a little bit if we can. Yeah, sure. So sure. when did you start? What what made you start the project in the first place, Tom? Well, I've always been interested in flying. I got my my uh, private pilot's license back in uh, 1989, and I knew Maury. I was actually looking through a uh, Kit Planes magazine, and there was a tiny little. Uh, ad in the Kit Plains, what caught my eye was Bryan, Ohio, and that's my hometown. Oh, and oh, wow. I'm like, okay, Hummel Aircraft, I should look this guy up. So Maury, You didn't know you were going to meet a legend. Uh, no, I had no idea. I just, uh, I, called the, I called the phone number and Maury answered the phone. <laughs> uh, and uh, he invited me to his house and showed me his Hummel bird that he had built. And, you know, he invited me to pick up the wing and see how light it was. And he was just... Uh, just a really interesting fella. Um, a few years passed and I found out that he'd made an ultralight. Uh -huh. And I saw it at a 4th uh, of July fly in there that we have every year in Bryan, Ohio. And I looked at it and I thought, well that just looks simple and cute. And I thought to myself then, you know, I just might build one of these someday. Had you ever I done had, anything like that before? I had never done anything like that. So this was I, out of the blue, you kind of got inspired by Maury and his project yeah, to build yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well then eventually uh, I went, I stopped into the airport one afternoon. I had a free afternoon. I stopped in, talked to Terry Hallett, the owner of, the, of Hummel Aviation at that time. This had been, this was a few years later, after Maury had sold off the right, right. The, uh, Terry's the been carrying the flame ever since. Yeah. So. And I told him, I said, I'm really interested in doing this. I said, I don't have a lot of shop experience. I've, I never even took shop class in high school. Uh, and he he sat back in his chair and he said, Tom, we're in business to get guys like you flying. I, and that, that image that day will stick with me forever because I thought, <laughs> all right, I'm going to take this man at his word. Uh, Not knowing you know, what you were getting into, really. No, really, no. Uh, so, uh, you know, several years later, here I am, uh, you know. I, I plans built my ultra cruiser and you plans I built it. Okay. And I really wish I'd have gone with the kit because uh, I just finished my I just finished it last month. I uh, put the last rivet in last month, and I've been taxiing it around. And um, I did my first flight a week ago Wednesday. Is that right? So, well, congratulations! Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's Thank a, you. Uh, that's quite an accomplishment mm -hmm. for anybody who's ever built one. But oh, certainly it's, when a, it's your first one. As there's a certain amount of satisfaction. It was several firsts for me that day because it was the first time I'd ever flown a tail dragger. <laughs> so. Wow, okay. So, yeah, there's a whole list there that you could go into. Yeah. Now, we're not standing in front of Tom's airplane here. That's this correct. is not it. Yeah. Yours is back Mine's home. not nearly this pretty. Yeah, yeah this one's this. The workmanship is pristine on this one, and mine is not. Yeah, this, this one looks very nice, no question about it. It's been years <laughs> since I flew one of these, but mm -hmm. I remember thinking, this is just a sweet little flying machine. It it's sure a, is. It yeah. kind of looks sort of racy with its yeah. uh, long nose sticking out and the smooth lines and yeah. the polished aluminum and all. Yeah. Almost looks like a little fighter aircraft. It does. It's got. It's almost got that P-51 look to it. It does, yeah. but, but it flew like a regular little airplane ought to fly, It I was thought. just a sweet little docile airplane. I couldn't ask for more. It just did everything I wanted it to. It was just an amazing experience. So you said now, this is some good advice for our listeners, Plans built is cool. I admire you for doing it, yeah. but it adds a, quite a dimension of work, does it not? It adds a lot of uh, it adds a lot of work and a lot of time. I yeah. So how many how many hours project? Did you keep track of that? Very loosely, yeah. Uh, a good a good estimate is two thousand to twenty two hundred hours. Okay, so yeah, but uh, again, this is plans built. This is not taking a kit and assembling yeah, some that's, parts. That's correct. You had to cut stuff, bend stuff, do the whole bit. Yeah, that's correct. I yeah. had to do the the form block thing, the whole the whole nine yards. The plans are really fantastic. Uh, are you know, if you if you you know if you come out here and, and look through a set of plans, there's a lot of full scale draw. Excuse me, drawings. Um, that's just a matter of tracing out your uh, the the part on a piece of paper. It's, are they they're full size? That, a lot of them are full scale. Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A lot of the, the so you rip. literally put the stock on the paper and work from there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Then you can trace that onto your uh, onto your material that you're using uh, for the form blocks. You would trace that onto a piece of plywood or whatever type of wood you're using to make your form block. Uh, 
but then you've got the process of making a form block and if you're going to go to that trouble then you've got a set of form blocks sitting around that you don't want to get rid of you don't want to throw those things away but when are you ever going to use them again yeah, you right know? right you know there should be a source of where people just send this stuff in and uh, somebody else can use then somebody it. else can use them sure too. well now you're back to the point of a kid again they're kind of well, taking yeah. that and going another step further but mm -hmm. in the effort you did did you were you in touch with the factory about should I buy what kind of aluminum should I buy what kind of more yeah. you know how just do I do? about every day <laughs> yeah is that right yeah and yeah. were they yeah. good about that oh fantastic yeah excellent I, good to hear when yeah I can I can call Terry or Steve or anybody there in the shop well it's it's pretty much Terry or Steve uh, and and ask them a question and they they'd work with me I had the advantage of, of only living several miles from uh, I live in Bryan Ohio so, so you can actually show miles. up if you needed to I could show up anytime show me I how you to. do yeah. this did exactly. you do that yes I did exactly ah, yeah. Okay. yeah so I yeah that's I, a big I had advantage. a big advantage there so right. I mean that's that's one of the reasons I opted for plans versus uh, versus a kit because I thought I can save some money and I can really tap these guys for some information just about any time I want to and you know I, w I would show up and ask a question and and Steve or, or Terry would pretty much drop what they were doing to answer my question. Wow that's, uh, that's some great customer service there. I'll bet you they kind of enjoyed you tackling the project that way. I think they did. I think that well I think they looked at, looked at me and said this is going to be such good advertising because if this guy can build a build an airplane, anybody can. Well, did you buy any actual physical product from them? I bought everything from them. And did that include bolts and you know those yeah. those kinds of things? Yeah, yeah. that includes much as you could from all them. the hardware I could get. Yeah, okay. yeah, everything I needed, they have right there in the shop. Let's say you were to do this again now, okay. and you do it with a kit the next time. I definitely would. Um, I definitely would. Based on what you saw, you haven't actually done it, but based on what you saw, would the process be? Uh, I'm guessing a lot easier if you oh, did that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's you know with it being my second time, definitely. Oh well, definitely uh, that as well, of uh, course. But, but even if it was my first time, yeah, uh, for to be able to take a kit or a kit part, take it out of the box and look at, especially with the new drawings that they have, the assembly drawings. Man, it's like it's like a giant erector set, basically. If your your directions are right there. This piece, get this piece, and take this piece and put them together, and then move on to the next part. What kind of space would you tell somebody they need to have available to do this? At least a one-car garage, preferably a two-car garage. Uh, let's shift gears a little bit okay, sure. and talk about engines. Okay. Uh, which engine are you using and where did you get it? I'm using the half VW okay. engine and I'm not an engine guy at all, uh, so it came from Scott Kessler. Uh, okay, so you got with, the engine uh, ready engines. to install? It was ready to go, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. alright, so that's good. and. Uh, now you've you've just got a little bit of flying on it, but yep. with your experience that you have flying on it, uh, give yep. me give me a, a little sample flight. How does it how okay. does it take off and taxiing go? Taxiing first, well, then take off and climb. Well, um, I'd never flown a tail dragger before, uh, so I did quite a bit of taxiing. Uh, I would just go out to the airport in the evening or whenever I had a, had a little bit of time, and I'd taxi around. And uh, one day last week, actually, there was a nice uh, quiet evening nice and calm and I thought you know I think I might just fly this thing today <laughs> so I borrowed a radio and I had Steve on the radio talking to me and so I I felt pretty confident I knew what I had to do from talking to Maury way back he would tell you how to fly the thing he said don't don't flare it just fly it right down to the runway and he just he'd get mad at guys for being scared because it's a tail dragger and he's like you don't need it to be a tri gear it's so, it's so stable and so I taxied out one that that night I had my head my borrowed headset on and my borrowed radio <laughs> and uh, I, I went out to the end of the runway and I thought well you know this is it this is what I built the thing for so uh, I just advanced the throttle nice and smooth to full power uh, it started rolling down the runway, the, the tail came up, uh, I can honestly tell you I don't know what airspeed it lifted off at or climbed out at because I was, you know, my first flight in it I was pretty nervous and I was just watching for other aircraft. Um, got up to about a thousand feet, oh, wow, leveled okay. off and uh, it just did everything I wanted it to do, everything I expected it to do, very docile, very, you know, you want to go left, you just a little a little bit of stick and a little bit of rudder and I kept everything really shallow. Yeah. I kept everything, all my turns were probably about 10 to 15 degrees. That's smart. Uh, yeah. Can I ask you what kind of total investment you had in the project? 
Uh, between well, between eleven and twelve thousand okay, dollars. Okay, well, probably. It's, a, it's a very modest With expense the, to have a nice yeah. uh, a nice flying machine that looks as good as this one. Yeah. Right, let's wrap it up here with a. Uh, uh, web address for uh, the folks at uh, Hummel, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure, it's uh, www.flyhummel.com. All right, very good. Well, lots of affordable aviation you can find on my website, including the Ultra Cruiser and the others from the Hummel Aviation Company. All that's at bydanjohnson.com.